opportunity for the young filmmaker today to do things that were unheard of when I first started into the industry. When I first came out to Hollywood in 1971, the only camera you really had available to you was the Mitchell, uh, 35 millimeter Mitchell. There really was almost nothing else really available to, to make films um, than the Mitchell camera. And the only exterior light that you had was the carbon arc. And the only interior lights you had were Mole Richardson 10Ks, 5Ks, and uh, 2Ks, regulars, the big ones, the big steel heads. So your capability to be able to make a motion picture at that time as an independent coming in was really practically nil. Yeah, um, today you can go out with your camera and you can practice making movies and c come back and throw it on your premiere and your computer and you can start making images and you can create montage. Um, um, my discovery of montage was at USC when Vorkopich and I studied the, the, the montage of the Russian cinema. Um, today, that's commonplace. You can put it on your pull it up on your computer. Well, I always see grips as light sculptures. They basically are the guy who's going in and taking the block of marble and cutting it to a form. So grips are the basically people that taper it, that that uh, form its uh, quality um, by the different kinds of materials that they use in front of the light, and the way they cut it with their flags and nets and and. Also, the other thing to, to eliminate other light that might be entering the frame. Um, there was one job I did one time in which I took a, um, uh, a material called visqueen and completely surrounded the house with visqueen. The entire house all the way around with this visqueen. And then I went inside and began to light inside. And whenever I wanted sun to come in, I went over and slid a hole in the... In, and the visqueen opened it up and the light came in at that angle. But then it closed it up afterwards and moved to the next one. And what we were able to do at that particular point is shoot daylight and nighttime all through the day and no disruption by anything outside, no difficulty of anything outside. If I looked out a window, I could control the light with nets or a variety of things, diffusion material, gel material, Right, like that, so that I was always balanced. And we were able to shoot an entire feature film in six days. Well, there, there are a lot of problems, for instance, having to deal with sunlight. The earth moves. And so if you're shooting a, a, a sequence and they're standing outside, um, if you start the sequence in the morning and finish it in the afternoon, the sun has changed sides on the people. Now you can't cut it together. So you don't want that, because otherwise you have wasted your opportunity to make a scene that makes any sort of sense to the public, because the public only sees it as two minutes. You may have taken six hours to shoot the scene, but the public's only going to see two or three minutes. And the light has got to be the same for that two or three minutes. It can't change from character to character as you make your cuts. So you must control all the light in order to be able to break down the time element that it takes you to shoot a scene, to the scene actual time element that's going to be on the, on the screen. So your control of the light at every second of that's on the screen there is important. Because you're going to lose your audience's sense of time the minute the light changes. The audiences today are very sophisticated about media. They have seen, when I first started, most people saw very little, a little television. We only had, what, six channels? Um, and um, uh, the film, you see it much more clearly, by the way, when you're talking about a feature film, much more clearly at being able to keep the audience aware of geography and time. Um, when you get into television and you start introducing the television series and stuff like that, a lot of things are thrown away because you're so close all the time that many times the light in the background or the light that's going on in the scene is somewhat irrelevant. And I say somewhat irrelevant because if you're standing there looking at somebody and it's black, pitch black out in the background and all of a sudden you cut away the other guy and it's the sunlight in the background, your audience is just going to be driving crazy. And that's a fact. And you really think people notice? Oh, people do notice. And 
is the other thing too is, is they may not necessarily know what's wrong, but they're uncomfortable. And that uncomfortableness translates to a turn off. If they begin to turn off because they don't believe what you're showing them, you've lost your audience. So they have to be a believer, and they have to believe it intrinsically, inside them. It's not something that say, you go, oh, I didn't believe what that guy said. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about reality that is fabricated by the filmmaker. And you're fabricating everything. You're fabricating the time of day, you're fabricating the emotional sensation of the actor, you're fabricating uh, the frame, you're de deciding what is going to be in the frame. Uh, a good point. When I was going to USC, I, I made a little film, a, a, a hundred foot load, and it was about a guy on a rooftop, and he gets out of this bag, and he stands up, and he walks around, and um, I thought, well, yeah, a clever little idea, you know, and so I just shot the thing on a hundred foot load. And we had a um, a period of time where we all took our pieces that we worked and we'd put them up on the screen and everybody then would come in from the class and, and look at the stuff and discuss it. Well, I put mine up on the screen and the first guy comes up and he says, uh, what's the telephone pole in the background? And I, and I looked up at the screen and I realized, yeah, there's a telephone pole in the background. Well, I was concentrating the guy in the bag. And it never occurred to me that the background would be something that the audience would be interested in seeing. But that was the first thing they came up with. This is, why did I put the telephone in the background? Did it mean something? Right. So everything you put into the frame means something to the viewer. Every element, whether you're putting a leaf back there, whether you're putting a fence back there, whether you're putting a sky back there, whether you're putting a blank wall back there, it changes how the audience views the scene that you're shooting. They have an emotional contact with that frame. And if you aren't aware of what you're doing out there, you're going to confuse your audience. And one thing you don't want to do is confuse your audience because you'll turn it off. And you want them to be on from the moment the image comes up on the screen to the moment it shuts off the screen. You want them to walk away and talk about what you did. That's your object. It's like a, a painter. Um, they create an image that they want the rest of the public to talk about. Now, they can say it's terrible, they can say it's ghastly, they can say, but they want them to talk about it. They want that audience to have a reaction to it. <laughs>